So far we have come across so many high-end workstation specifications. 16 or 32 GB of RAM, 4 TB of SSD storage, the jaw-dropping teraflop ratings, ultimate graphics utilizing 8 GB of memory, lightning speed processor with 8 cores or even 18 cores. But what exactly is a core? A core is a part of a CPU that receives instructions and performs the computational part or actions based on those instructions as required by a program. The instructions can allow a software program to perform a specific function. Originally, CPUs had single core, which meant the CPU could handle only one task at a time since it had only one processing unit. To boost the performance, manufacturers implemented dual cores in a single CPU. The processor is the entire chipset that is composed of all the cores involved. Cores are two or more independent parts of the processor that do parallel processing, which means processing two different data simultaneously in different units. This helps in multitasking without causing much strain on the processor and affecting its performance. Each core can work on one task at a time, so the more the number of cores a CPU has, the more the efficient or faster it is, since it can perform multiple tasks at the same time. Or simply, it divides the workload into multiple sections, then each core works on those sections and finally add their output together. A dual-core CPU literally has two cores or processing units on the CPU chip. Like that, a quad-core CPU has four, an octocore CPU has 8, and so on. Using this concept of multiple cores improves the performance significantly while maintaining a small CPU unit size. This also reduces the requirement of each core to be cooled, supplied with power since they all share the same resources from the parent CPU. Best of all, there is much less latency due to faster communication between each other as a result of being on the same chipset. However, adding more cores to the CPU does not come cheap. The overall price tag must be considered as well. This is where hyperthreading comes to light. Manufacturers found hyperthreading as a substitute for additional cores. A single physical CPU core with hyperthreading appears as two logical CPUs to an operating system, while the CPU is still a single CPU. The actual CPU hardware can receive only a single set of instructions for execution for each core, even though with hyperthreading, the operating system takes into account two CPUs for each core. It appears to the operating system as if the CPU has double the number of cores than it actually does, and it uses its own logic to speed up program execution. In other words, it is just a clever scheduling of data execution by the existing cores on the CPU. But this approach of hyperthreading is not as much as efficient as having real extra cores on the CPU. Hyperthreading tends to be more effective for multi-threaded workload than for single-threaded workload. Now let's talk about clock speed of a CPU. Clock speed of a CPU is the speed or frequency at which the CPU executes instructions of a program. It can be measured in megahertz or gigahertz, although you won't hear megahertz a lot these days. It indicates how fast the PC fetches, decodes, and executes the data. Hence, a higher frequency or clock speed means better performance. CPUs have a range of clock speeds. It maintains a base speed when subjected to low demanding tasks like playing music and sending emails or when the PC is just idle. On the other hand, the CPU is able to reach peak speed or in fancy term, turbo speed when subjected to heavy tasks like gaming or 4K video editing. This, however, as a side effect generates more heat and processors often throttle it to lower clock speeds to prevent overheating. So that's all about it. Hope you guys liked the video, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and until next, stay tuned.